come and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another day that you've given to us. It's just been good to be in your house today and be with our brothers and sisters in Christ just to see how you're working in, in the lives around us. And, and God, we just have so much to praise you for and thank you for. And, and we just stand in awe uh, of you and, and what you're able to accomplish in our lives. And Lord, we're so thankful for little Abel and the way that you're bringing him along. It's just amazing to see him and and God, thank you for Caleb Doolin and the way that uh, you've worked in his life. And Father, we've just uh, we've been blessed today just to see your hand at work, and we thank you and we praise you for that. Uh, Lord, we just come before you now and just ask that you work in our hearts tonight. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to exalt uh, our Savior tonight in our worship and in our response to the preaching of the Word of God. Father, help us to be obedient and sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And God, we're going to thank you and praise you for everything that you do in this service tonight. Uh, Lord, we know that we have not yet attained. There's still work to be done in all of us. And so God, help us to have open hearts and open minds uh, to receive the word of God. And uh, Lord, we'll thank you and praise you again for all that you do in this service. Fathers, we pray, we ask that you'd be with all those that are suffering. We have many that have been mentioned tonight. There's all kind of needs, Lord. There's the physical needs and emotional needs and and. Uh, financial needs I'm sure and and so father uh, we're we're thankful tonight that you know what we need even before we ask you're able to meet all of our needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus and and father we just want to praise you tonight and we come to you with boldness and assurance tonight not because of who we are but because of who you are and we give you these needs and these uh, requests and we just pray for your will to be done and for you to be glorified and and for Jesus to be praised through it all and we'll thank you and praise you for it God have your way in this service uh, Lord, move on our hearts. Just bless our time together, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get our hymn books tonight and turn to 444. 444. Let's stand as we sing, please.
everybody. Just got a few announcements for y'all. Um, got a general board meeting Sunday, April 21st at 4.30. Uh, encourage all board members to be here, please. Uh, business meeting Wednesday, April 24th. Uh, following the service, all members requested to attend. Uh, and then men's ministry Thursday, April 25th. Anything on that? All right. There you go. Um, okay. All right. And then April Revival with Kenny Greenway is the 26th through the 28th. The 26th is a Friday. It'll be at 7 p.m. Saturday the 27th is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And lunch is going to be following that service. And then Sunday, April 28th, he'll be here for the 8.30 and the 10.45. Missing anything? Visitation one. Visitation, 6.30. Good. All right. Ushers, if you'll come, please. Joyce are going to minister in song tonight. Last Sunday night, I had the privilege of singing with Miss Penny. Tonight, I have the privilege of singing with Miss Joyce. So next Sunday night, I guess it's me and Pastor Steve. Notice I can't see him and he can't see me. Oh, just listen to the words and don't listen to us and don't listen to me playing because I only play when I play with her and it hurts. It really hurts to play. We'll do the best we can. A farmer and a teacher, a hooker and a preacher, riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico. One was headed for vacation, one for higher education, and two of them, they were searching for lost souls. That driver never, ever saw the stop sign. And 18 wheelers that can't stop on a dime. And there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. It's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. 
It's what you leave behind you when you go. And there a farmer left to harvest a home in 80 acres. The faith and love for growing things in his young son's heart. And that teacher left her wisdom in the minds of lots of children and did her best to give them all a better start. And that preacher whispered, can't you see the promised land? As he laid his blood-stained Bible in that hooker's hand. And there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. It's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. It's what you leave behind you when you go. Well, that's the story that our preacher told last Sunday. As he held that blood-stained Bible up for everyone to see, he said, bless the farmer and the teacher and the preacher who gave that Bible to my mama, who read it to me. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway why there's not four of them now i guess we know it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you it's what you take when you go sorry about that there are Three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. That's probably the end of your time singing with the McSwains for a while. <laughs> oh man, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. there? Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this day and for another opportunity to uh, get into your word. And Father, our prayer is that your word gets into us tonight and, and changes our lives. Uh, we thank you, Father, for just being so faithful to us, uh, for blessing our time while we're here. And God, just uh, help us now to honor you and your son. Help us to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Slide up to the edge of your seat. Let's see what God has for us tonight. Just a few verses here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to read uh, starting with verse 9. <clears throat> for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Amen. We're going to continue looking at cultivating spiritual truth or spiritual growth. 
And this morning, I, I didn't say this. It was on my notes. Didn't get around to saying it. But when we're talking about cultivating, now, y'all know I am an expert farmer. Amen. And, uh, boy, I just, I, man, I am a farmer. First, I'm terrible. Terrible farmer. I've not yet even tilled up my garden this year. Don't know that I'll ever get around to it. it Penny asked me. We pulled in a drive yesterday, and Penny looked at the, at the end of our drive. You can see my garden down there. And she says, do you have to do something to that? <laughs> yes, it needs something done to it. But anyway, when it comes to cultivating, though, and I think most of us probably are aware of this, but when we're talking about cultivating, we're talking about uh, preparing ground for growth. Amen. We're either, when you're cultivating the ground, you're either cultivating and getting ready to sow seed or you're getting ready to put out fertilizer or whatever, but you break it up and you prepare it and you get it ready for growth. And so that's kind of where we're at tonight and, and where we're going to be at over the next few services is we're going to just ask God to cultivate our hearts and prepare them for spiritual growth and the seed that's being sown during this time. We're going to ask the Lord to let it fall on cultivated ground, ground that is prepared so that it will bring forth fruit and there will be a difference in us as we grow spiritually, amen? And so we're going to continue on with that tonight and, and tonight we're going to look uh, at uh, moving from cloudiness to clarity, from cloudiness to clarity or we could say from childishness to Christ-likeness, amen? And that's what we're going to look at, that's what Paul uh, was dealing with here was spiritual growth. And I like the way that he associates spiritual growth with physical growth, right? And uh, it, it is amazing, but it's understandable how so oftentimes we can understand spiritual things by looking at physical things. Amen. Better understand them anyway. And, uh, you know, our God is a, is, is a spirit. The Bible tells us in John chapter 4 that God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's, God is a spirit, and he deals in spiritual issues. Amen? But at the same time, He is the God of creation, and He has created all things physical. John tells us in John chapter 1 that all things were made by Him, and there was nothing made that was not made by Him. He, he creates the physical, so it's, it's understandable why we see His fingerprint, so to speak, on all of the physical world, all of the physical things, and that's why we can usually understand spiritual things by looking at physical things. And that's what Paul's dealing with here. He's talking about when he was a child and, and what it looks like to be childish. And then he talks about being a man and what it looks like to be mature. And so that's kind of what we're going to look at as we go through this thing tonight. Uh, we understand uh, spiritual things by, by looking at physical things. I'll give you a few examples of that. One is the structure of our earthly families helps us to understand better the spiritual family of God. Amen. Our earthly families help us to understand that. We, we understand that as children, we are to be submissive to our parents, right? We better be. We should be, and we ought to be. And if we aren't, then there ought to be some kind of uh, correction in that. Say amen. amen. There ought to be some kind of correction. But we, we understand, you know, in a family, you got in a in a, in a, a, a a typical family, you have a father, and you have a mother, and you have children, right? And you know, there's not, uh, you can't place a, more of a value, so to speak, on a father than you can a child. They're all created in God's image, right? And, and so value-wise, they're of equal value. But we know that in order for a family to operate in the correct way, that the children have to be submissive to the parents. And we also know that the Bible tells us that the wife is to be submissive to the husband. Amen. In, in the Lord, he, she's supposed to be submissive to the husband. So we see that even though they are equal in the eyes of God, they're all God's created beings, we know that there has to be that 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 submission in order for the family to work. And that right there helps us to understand the family of God. It helps us to understand the Godhead. You know, we always talk about the Trinity and try to explain the Trinity and things like that. I don't know that we'll ever get that down pat. How God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three separate personalities and persons, and yet they're all uh, one together. But as we look at the earthly family and how submission works in the earthly family, we can understand how things work in the Godhead. That even though God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, all three being equal, 
not one greater than the other, and yet Christ submits himself to the authority of the Father. And the Holy Spirit submits himself to the authority of God the Son and God the Father. And it makes it work. Amen? Just like submission in the home makes it work. When you got rebellion going on in the home, you, you've got trouble. Amen? And so we understand the spiritual from the physical. We understand the kind of relationship that God wants us to have with him by looking at the relationship of husband and wife. That's what Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 5. He, he tells us that, you know, I, I, this is the way that the husband and wife relationship is supposed to be. And at the end of talking all about that, he says, really, I'm talking about Christ and the church. I'm talking about the relationship between Christians and their Savior. Amen. There's supposed to be submission on our part. There's sacrifice on his part. And we too, we, we become one with Christ, us and him and him and us. And so we see that, that's, isn't that what the relationship of husband and wife is? The two become one flesh? Amen. Amen. What God has put together, let no man put us under. Not supposed to be divided. Let me tell you something. We're not going to be divided from our, our, groom, our bridegroom. Amen. So praise the Lord. So we understand better the spiritual when we're looking at some of the things in the physical realm. And that's what Paul is trying to teach us here. And he starts out by saying in verse 11, he says, when I was a child... I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. When we start out, I don't care who we are, I don't care what our background is, I don't care if we've been raised in a Christian home, I don't care if we've been in a Christian school, I don't care if we've gone to a Christian university and been in Christian seminary, when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we come as a child, we start out as a child. Amen. Uh, Brother Steve Jacobs, he's, he's often, me and him, talked about, you know, he was raised up in church. He, he knew a lot of the Bible just because of all the time he spent in church. His mama had him in church every time the doors were open, every time there was a revival, they were in church. And he had a lot of head knowledge of the Bible. He had heard it preached. He had heard it taught. But when he came to faith in Christ seven, eight, nine years ago, whatever it's been now, he started out crawling. He realized that, that all of a sudden he just had head knowledge. He had no heart knowledge. He didn't have that spiritual understanding that Paul prayed for for the church at Colossae that we looked at this morning. He didn't have that. So I don't care whatever point in life you come to faith in Christ, you're going to come as a child. You're going to start out as a child. Our spiritual walk of faith always begins with a crawl. Amen? And, and so... Uh, as a child, we speak as a child. We understand as a child. We, we, we think and reason as a child. I told Sam and Sadie yesterday evening, I said, uh, I'm going to preach about y'all tomorrow night. And Sadie said, are we going to have to come up on stage? <laughs> I said, no, I'm just going to talk about you. And I want you to know that since the Lord's been dealing with me about this, this series of messages, I've been kind of watching them and listening to them and seeing how they act as a child how they think things out, how they reason things out. And it reveals just how cloudy their understanding is of spiritual things. And it's okay because they're a child. Amen? It's understandable when a person first comes to faith in Christ that they don't know it all and they just, they're not 100% what you think they ought to be. They're, they're a child. And it's just like there's foolishness in the heart of a child. They're going to do foolish things. Young Christians are going to do foolish things. Woo, did I do some foolish things as a young Christian. Things I'd never do now. Amen? Never do now. But boy, I did them back then. And it was, all, hey, it was understandable because I was just a child in the faith. But I, I've been watching uh, Sadie and Sam and listening to them. And, and they question why they can't have a bag of Skittles right before supper. They don't understand why they can't have a bunch of candy right before they get ready to eat a meal. They just don't get it. That's just childish, right? Sam was just telling me right there, sitting right there. He looked at me, yeah, Penny, see there? He's done th he threw you under the bus. He said, Mamma always gives me candy. <laughs> now I know why they don't understand why they can't have it at supper time. But they get upset when they have to take a bath. And you look at their feet and they're black. And their necks got them little old black necklaces on there, you know. And then they get, they, why do I have to take a bath? Well, you stink. 
and you're dirty, and you got to go to school tomorrow, and you can't go looking like that and smelling like that. But they don't understand. They get all upset. They get bent out of shape. Sadie's favorite word, it seems, at this time in her young life, is poop. You know, I was thinking as they were singing that song, we might ought to put a rating on this Facebook thing tonight. It it may be PG, I don't know. We've heard about hookers. (laughs) And now poop. (laughs) But that seems to be her favorite word now. She says it all the time. I even told her the other day, I said, you keep saying that over here at our house, and I'm going to forbid you to come. And that worked for about 30 minutes. But I had a shirt on yesterday as a work shirt, one I just wear when I'm mowing the yard and stuff like that, and it's got white paint on it. And I walk in the house, and she starts giggling and putting her hand over her face. And I said, what are you laughing about? She said, you got bird poop on your shirt. (laughs) She calls me Poopy Papa. (laughs) And listen, you know, we laugh at that. And, and we laugh at it because that's understandable. She's just a kid. She's just a child. And, and that's the way when you're, you, when you're a child, you talk like a child. You speak like a child. You think like a child. Amen. She's just six years old. But 10 years from now or 15 years from now or 20 years from now, if Sam and Sadie still question why they can't have Skittles before supper, there's a problem. Amen. 15, 20 years from now, if they still get upset because they need to take a bath, There's a problem. And if that is Sadie's favorite word 20 years from now, then we're going to understand real quick that she has failed to mature. Amen? Well, can I tell you that's exactly what happens in the spiritual realm as well? All laughing has ceased. Go to Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. Look at verse 11, starting with verse 11, Hebrews chapter 5. Thank you for bringing your Bibles tonight. Hebrews chapter 5. Don't ever stop bringing your Bibles. Somebody asked me when we were moving into this new sanctuary if we were going to have pew Bibles, Bibles in the backs of chairs. Absolutely not. Jamie, don't ever let that happen. If I leave from this place, don't ever let that happen. People need to bring their Bibles. Amen. You need to bring your Bible. Right? One that you're reading during the week. One that you're studying from. Bring that Bible. Amen. And don't, oh, sad if you just said, I don't have that Bible. You got to have that Bible. Right? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing we are dull of hearing. That's what, that's what goes on with children. They're dull of hearing. Amen? Do you, do you know when, when you tell a child something, it, it very rarely ever gets through the first time? Right? You have to tell them again, don't you? And you have to tell them again. And, and, and sometimes it's just hard for them to comprehend what you're telling them. That's, that's sometimes, sometimes they're just being hard-headed and, and stiff-necked and, and don't want to do it. But at other times, they just don't really comprehend. Uh, I, I told Sam yesterday, uh, Saturday, I guess it was Friday maybe, Friday evening, uh, Sam was getting ready to go to baseball practice. And so I thought I'd get him out there and let him swing a few. And I, and I put the ball on the tee. And, and I had the net up, and I said, now, you just, you, I'm going to get over there, and I'm going to act like I throw you the ball, and I want you to you see me throw the ball, and I want you to see the ball, and then I want you to swing and hit it. I said, now, when you get up there, I want you to take a slow swing, put your bat out there, and see where the barrel of the bat is coming across the plate because you want the fat part of the bat to come across the plate like that. So he gets up there, and he does like this. And I said, no, 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 Sam, that's not the way you swing. That's, that's a sissy swing. I said, get it out there, extend your arms, get it out there and see where that thing's going to be. And he, he, you know, I could tell why I was telling him, it it just wasn't connecting. And so I got on the other side of the net and I acted like I threw one and and he swung and he hit about that far down on the tee. 
And I said, okay, Sam, let's do this again. So we went through this, and every time, I had to tell Sam, now Sam, take that slow swing, get your bat over to the plate, see where it's going to be. It just wasn't connecting with him. It wasn't that he was trying to be hard-headed or, or stiff-necked. It just wasn't registering with him everything that I was trying to tell him. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a man. I'm, I've been through all that. I've been taught that. I've, I've swung a bat for years. I know it. I know it. And so I, I got it, but he's learning it. And so he just wasn't comprehending it. They're dull of hearing. And I can tell you right now, that's where a lot of immature Christians are today. They hear it, but I, I, it's like I've said before, it's like Charlie Brown's teacher. I'm up here preaching it and teaching it over and over and over, and it's like, wah, 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 wah. You just don't hear it. You don't comprehend it. That's a sign of immaturity. Amen. And so the writer of Hebrews says, you're dull of hearing. For, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. The writer of Hebrews is saying, look, you ought to be mature now. You ought to be adults, Christian adults. You ought to be solid in your spiritual growth. And yet you have need for somebody to take a bottle and feed you like a baby. He, he goes on to say, for everyone that is, uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who have by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And Paul, Paul, the writer of Hebrews here is saying, look, by this time you are to be grown up spiritually. You, you are to be growing. You cannot become complacent. You can't just stay where you are. You've got to grow. Amen? And that's what Paul is dealing with over there. And he says, man, we, we have professing Christians today that are born again. They were born again several years ago. We've got them. We, hey, some of you have been saved more years than I am. Well, maybe not that many. Mr. Foy might be. No, he's not either. I know when he got saved. He, he got saved low. Anyway, you've been saved a long time. But still you speak immaturely you think spiritually immaturely you reason things spiritually immaturely by the time you ought to be teachers teaching others sharing with others you have to be fed milk it's time to grow up it's time to grow up amen you've been around church way too long it's time to grow up you've been a christian way too long it's time to grow up and that's what Paul says. Go back over to our text over there in 1 Corinthians 13. And look what he says. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. If we're going to grow up spiritually, if we're going to move from being cloudy in our spiritual thinking to being clear, clear in our spiritual thinking, we're going to have to put away childish things, childish ways. We got to put them away. We got to get rid of them. Amen. Our tongues, our tongues have to be bridled. I'm praying for Sadie that her tongue will be bridled and that she won't call me that anymore. Amen. But our tongues have to be bridled. You say, what are you talking about? Go over to James. James, you know this, James chapter 3. Let me know when you're there. James chapter 3, look at verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. You see what he says there? He says, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. You know what that word perfect means, right? Mature. You see, we've got to, we, if we're going to move away from being childish, then we've got to put away those childish things. We've got to, by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit, we've got to bridle our tongue. Amen? We've we got to bridle our tongue. We can't say everything that pops in our mind. Oh, boy. I need to say that again. We can't say everything that pops in our mind. We have to, we have to bridle our tongue. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, we'll have all kinds of thoughts. Man, I have all kinds of thoughts. Oh, good Grannies, man, if I said everything that popped in my mind, woo, 
Woo, we'd have two people here, Sam and Sadie. Everybody else be mad and gone. Amen. We can't say everything that pops in our minds. We have to bridle our tongues. Every thought that comes is not supposed to be, it's not supposed to see the light of day. We have to filter those things but through the Holy Spirit. We have to grow up. Man, a kid will say anything that pops in their minds. Anything. They don't care. They don't care. They don't even think about offending people. Amen. <laughs> I, I ain't even going to tell you this, but it, Sadie, Sadie, some of the things she says sometimes, it's like, Sadie, you ain't supposed to tell you that to people, you ain't supposed to, you ain't, she'll say things to me and it's like, you hurt my feelings, Sadie, <laughs> I can't believe you said that, there's no bridle on a child's tongue. We're not supposed to be that way. We've got to put those kind of things away. There's a lot of church splits. There's a lot of people not in the house of God today because somebody didn't bridle their tongue. An immature Christian didn't bridle their tongue. Amen. It's time we grow up, and if we're going to grow up, we have to put away childish things. Our speech has to be filled with grace and seasoned with salt. Mercy and grace has to be meeting together in our conversation. Mercy and truth has to come together. Amen? Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of people that know the Bible, man. Oh, they know the Bible, but they're immature in their, in their understanding, and they'll throw something out, Bible, and think, boy, I got you. That's not the way we use the Word of God. The Word of God is supposed to be spoken in love, concern for other people. Amen? It's very immature to use the Word of God as a, as a whip or as a hammer. The Word of God is to be used to encourage and edify and strengthen, convict. Amen? So we have to put away these childish things. We're to edify one another. Go over to Colossians right quick. We was there this morning. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Look at verse 16. Colossians 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now let me tell you something. Some of the things, and I'm using Sam and Sadie tonight just because they're our family and, and, and I can. Amen? But Sam and Sadie do certain things that they would never do if Matt was standing there. You did the same thing. I did the same thing. If, they wasn't, if, if, if mom or dad wasn't around, oh, I would say foolish things. I would do foolish things. You did too. Amen? But as soon as dad comes around, as soon as I knew dad was there and he could see me and hear me, boy, things straightened up. Amen. Well, you know what? I, I, this is my interpretation. This is my, the way that I get this in my heart to help me. It says here that it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and all wisdom, teaching and admonishing each other. You know, it's a hymn, song, spiritual song. And it says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know how we're supposed to talk to each other? Just like Jesus was standing right here. When I talk to Landon, I should talk to him just like Jesus is standing right there with us involved in that conversation. Boy, I tell you right now, that'd help us. We'll put away childish things then. We'll quit acting childish. We'll quit saying some of the things that we've been saying, doing some of the things that we've been doing. If we'll say, hey, you know what? Jesus is right here. Amen. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child I reasoned as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things I started letting the Holy Spirit bridle my tongue I didn't say things that I once said I didn't I didn't say everything that popped in my mind I started trying to edify people and encourage people I started trying to use the word of God to be a help instead of a a, a spear amen that shows that's maturity folks and that's what we have to move toward. We have to, we have to get out of this cloudy, childish thinking and reasoning, and we have to move into clarity and understand the Word of God spiritually discerned. Amen? 
We have to put away childish things when it comes to our understanding and our reasoning. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. A lot of you know that verse of Scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to tell you something right now. We've got to have our minds renewed. We can't, we can't sit around watching cartoons all the time. Square, pop, square Pants Bob or whatever his name is. What? SpongeBob SquarePants. That's what it is. That's not helping us. Can I tell you that? It's not ha- Some of this stuff that we keep pumping into our minds and into our hearts is not helping us. We've got to stop being conformed to this world and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We've got to grow up. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it talks about acknowledging God in all of our ways and leaning not to our own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all of our ways. He'll direct our paths. That's what we've got to do. We've got to stop leaning to this childish understanding. And we've got to mature and we've got to grow up. We've got to move out of that, that cloudiness and childishness and move into spiritual clarity. Amen? We've got to trade in carnal understanding and worldly reasoning, and we've got to start trusting God in His ways. We gotta, if we're going to put away childish things, we've got to move from sight to faith. You remember Thomas? wasn't there when Jesus came the first time to the disciples after the resurrection and the disciples the other disciples told him said oh Jesus was here and he said well I don't, I'm not going to believe it unless I see it I'm not going to believe it unless I see his nail scarred hands I'm not going to believe it unless I can thrust my hand into his side where that spear was well the next time Jesus showed up Thomas was there and Jesus showed him he said look here, here's my hands put, you, put your hand in my side and he said, Thomas, Thomas said, you know, when he did that, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. All of a sudden, he, he came to faith. He came to be a, you know, believe in the resurrection at that point. And Jesus said, Thomas, you believe because you saw it. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You see, if we're going to move out of that childishness and that cloudiness, we've got to, we've got to move from sight to faith. I'm going to tell you something right now. If, we, if all we ever do is operate on what we see, we'll never grow up in Christ. If all we do is look at the world and say, okay, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and that's the way we live our life, we'll never grow up in Christ. Sometimes people, all they see is the things that's going on in the world, and because of that, they begin to doubt God. They begin to doubt his love. They begin to doubt his his protection. They begin to doubt his provision because of some of the things that they're seeing in this world. God doesn't change. This world is changing all the time. God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His promises never fail. I don't care what's going on in this world. His word is sure and steadfast. And we might look at something and say, well, I don't understand how God could let that happen. I don't either, but God's still God. I don't know why Abel has to go through heart surgeries. I don't know why Caleb Doolin had to go through everything that he's been through. I don't understand why Pete has got to go through these surgeries. But God's still God. And I don't go by what I see. I go by faith. That God is still at work. Some people can't, man, they can't see God's hand in things because of the hurt. And we don't understand that God allows hurt to come into our life, maybe to increase our faith in Him, maybe to re- for us to reach out and hold on to Him tighter. Maybe He allows hurt and pain to come into our life to make us more holy. But I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to move from sight to faith to see that. Go over to Hebrews 11 right quick. Hebrews 11. I'm about done. Go to Hebrews 11. (laughs) Bad timing on that amen, Ryan. I said I'm about done. (laughs) We're in Hebrews chapter 11. Y'all know verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what? Things not seen. You see, you got to move out of sight to faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence. 
Evidence. You know what evidence is? It's right there. This is evidence that God is real. You say, I don't see nothing. That's faith. Just because we can't see God. Y'all know that little, little account, right? The professor telling the student, I don't believe in God. I've never seen him. I don't think he exists. And the student says, well, professor, I've never seen your brain. <laughs> That'll sink into the rest of you later. <laughs> but we got to trust that God is. He says, I am. I am. He is. Always has been, always will be. And we have to trust that. It says there, that, 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 look down at verse 13. In Hebrews chapter 11, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You see, you got to move out of sight to faith. They, they embraced the promises of God. God promised them great things. He promised them a, a land flow of milk and honey. He promised them all of these things. They died never seeing it, They're never having it in their hand, but they saw it afar off. They saw it by faith. Hallelujah. I've not seen heaven, but I know it's real. I don't know what he's preparing for me, but I know he's preparing me something. I've never seen that, but I believe it. Amen. Look at verse 27 in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses was being raised up in Pharaoh's palace. Man, he was eating the best of food, wearing the best of clothes, having the best of teachers. But man, he saw far off there was something better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, we got to move from sight to faith if we're going to grow up, if we're going to mature, if we're going to move out of cloudiness. I can tell you right now, the eyes of faith can see a whole lot better than the physical eye. Amen. So we got to move out of sight to faith. These, these folks here in Hebrews chapter 11, they, they're there because they were people of great faith. Think about it. God told Noah to build an ark because it was going to rain. And the Bible says he moved with fear. Rain? He'd never seen rain. God told Noah, he said, you build this ark out here, gave him the measurements. Man, I mean, it was, a, it was as big as any cruise ship today. And he said, you build it right here. There, it was not a body of water within 600 miles that could float a ship that size. But he trusted him. He couldn't see it. Couldn't understand it all. But he trusted God was God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, just uh, time and time again, Abraham. 100 years old, God comes and says, it's going to be a daddy. It's going to be a daddy. Mr. Foy, what would happen if somebody come up to you and said, you're going to be a daddy? Mr. Foy would fall out. But Abraham said, okay, God, I don't understand that, how that's going to happen. My wife, Sarah, she's old. She's past childbearing years. I'm old. But God, you're God. And even though I can't see it, I can't understand it, I can't comprehend it all, I know it's possible with you. By faith, I know it's possible with you. So we've got to move from sight to faith if we're going to get out of this old cloudiness and get into spiritual clarity. Amen. We go back with me as we close. Go back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want you to see something here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, I, I'm getting ready to share something with you right here, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm really not exactly confident that it is the correct interpretation of it, okay? But I, it, it's helped me, and so I'm just going to share it with you. I want you to look there now in verse 12. He says, for now we see through a glass darkly. Now. We see through a glass darkly. We see things cloudy, right, darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. I think those two thens there in that verse are two different thens. I think that first one right there for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. I think he's talking about then being when we mature. When we put away childish things and become a man in our faith and in our trust of God. Amen. 
for now, we see through a glass cloudy, but man, when we become mature in our faith, we begin to see things clearly. And then I think the second then, I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. I think that then is when we get to heaven. When he says that last part there, even as also I am known, that's the biblical way for saying that everything will make sense then. As long as we trod this old soil, everything's not going to make sense. We just have to trust God. Amen. That's not being naive. That's being mature in our faith. That even though we see things we don't understand, things we can't explain, things that, that just blow our minds, we trust God. We see that his hand is in it all. Amen. We know it is. We trust that that's the case. But one of these days we're going to see him face to face, Donna. One of these days we're going to know it and it's all going to be clear. Amen. Amen. We ought to be moving out of that cloudiness now to clarity. But boy, that, at that day, we'll know even as we are known. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me. We got to keep growing, folks. Got to stop being children. We can't talk like Sadie. Can't act like Sam. We got to grow up. I'm just picking with you, buddy. Just picking with you. Let's pray. Altars open if you'd like to come. God, help me to grow tonight. Help me to mature in my faith. Help me to see things through the eyes of faith. Stop depending so much on what I can do and what I know. And let me just rest upon the God that knows all things. You come tonight if you need to pray. Friend, if you're here tonight and you don't know Christ as your Savior, it would be a great time to get saved be a great time for you to turn from your sin, turn your life over to Christ, receive the gift of eternal life. Can't think of a better time than right now for you to do that. You've been around here a little while. God's dealing with you. God's working in your life, and you know you need to be saved. Would you slip your hand up tonight and say, Preacher, that's me. I know I'm not right with God, but I want to be. I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to die in my sins. I want God to forgive me and be Lord of my life. If that's you, slip your hand up right now. We're not going to tarry long. If God's dealing with you, now's the time. Don't turn him away. Don't turn a deaf ear. It's time to give up and let God have his way in your life. Anyone? Preacher, that's me. I'm ready to take that step of faith. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Would you come and let us pray with you tonight? Would you come? Penny, would you pray with Cadence here? Cadence, I'm proud of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone else tonight? Preacher, I know God's working in my life. I know that he's dealing with me. I know he wants me to be his child. And tonight I'm ready to take that step. If that's you, would you come? Would you come tonight? I'm not going to, I'm not trying to embarrass you. There's just something about taking a step of faith. Confessing your need of a Savior. Something about bowing your heart before God, saying, God, would you just save me? Would you forgive me of my sins? Would you help me to live for you? Would you come and make that decision tonight? Would you do that? Anyone else? It's a good time. It's been a good day in the Lord. It'd be a good time to get saved. Anyone else? Fathers, we come in the precious name of Jesus tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you care for us. We we all act very childish sometimes in our faith. God, sometimes we just we just walk around in a cloud and and Lord, we're wanting to see something instead of just believing and trusting. And Father, I just pray that you help each one of us tonight to move away from that childishness, to put away those childish things and and become a man in our faith, become a man in our, in our spiritual growth, an adult, God, not a, not a man, but an adult. Let us grow up tonight. Let us become more and more like Christ. Let us trust you more. Let us believe in you more. Let us walk with you more. Walk by faith and not by sight. God, you just continue to work in our hearts and in our lives. Looking forward to what you're going to do through this, Lord, and how our church is going to grow and, 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 and be more useful to you and, and bring you more glory and bring you more honor and praise. God, we, just, uh, we ask that you just continue to work in us. 
And Lord, help us not to be complacent in our walk with you. Help us not to be childish, but help us to continue to grow and press toward that mark of the high calling. And God, will give you the praise and the glory. Thank you, Lord, for little Cadence that's come down here tonight. And Lord, you know her heart. You know what her desire is. You know what her needs are. And I just pray now that, that you'd minister to her, make yourself real to her. Give her that assurance, God, and we'll give you the praise and the glory for it. We love you. Again, we thank you for this day, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.